Hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of the Buy Round interview show. Today, I am joined by a man who I always say thank you to, but I haven't yet. So Jack, thank you. Uh, a man who was part of the most iconic moments in our sports history, uh, which we're going to talk about a little bit later on. Uh, a man that's name will have come up on every single uh, retention and recruitment meeting over in the, in the NRL, all 17 clubs. Man of the moment, Jack Wellsby. Hi, mate. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on, Jack. I really appreciate you uh, taking some time off in your off-season. Uh, how are you? How's the, um, how's the off-season going? Yeah, good. Just uh, really relaxed, to be honest. I'm not not a big holiday man. I'm not not mad on going abroad and stuff like that. We've had a couple of trips up to the Lake, Lake District in England and just chilling out, really. Just just plodding on, getting a bit fed up now, ready to get back in. Yeah, it's good that you, you, you get to that point, don't you, where you just, like, I'm almost a bit bored. Yeah, exactly that, I think. Especially when my missus is in work all day. I'm sat at home, twiddling my thumbs, waiting to do something. Been in training a couple of times at Saints just to see the lads and have a crap with them, really. I'm getting really bored. So, yeah, I can't wait to get back in. Yeah, nice. That, that's um, that's good to hear. Well, obviously, we've got um, a, a lot to get through, but going back, bursting onto the scene back in 2019, the first time I can recall watching you play was actually the World Club Challenge in, I think it was 2020, against the Sydney Roosters. And I can remember the teams coming out and Lachlan Coote must have been injured and they've got this young lad in there called Jack Wellsby. And I'm like, oh, this lad could be in for a long night here. Like going up against James Tedesco, who was, you know, probably one of the best players in the world at that point in time, the, the, the Sydney Roosters teams that were were dominating the NRL. And I thought, oh, this, fool, this young kid, it's almost not fair. Like, but then I watched you play that game. I was like, this lad's going places. Like you just, you look so relaxed for, what were you, 18 or at that point? Yeah, probably probably 18, 19. If it was early in the season, probably 18, yeah. Yeah, and like you just, you, you made it look easy and you took on everything that they threw at you. It, what was it like going into that, into that game? Because it, it, nine games at that point or something like that yeah I'd not played many um I was I was pretty nervous but I think I think the, the main thing that came we had pretty pretty disjointed team going into that I think James Bentley was on in off, off the back of a few games Matt Costello played I think we were missing a fair few players so it was almost like just just going out of our go I think no one expected us they they'd gone back to back to back as well yeah they? they had yeah yeah um so we knew what we was expecting but uh yeah just excitement was my main feeling going into it and just ready to have a go I think that's my main thing going into every big game is you've trained all your life to get here and you don't get many opportunities to play against an NRL team so having that opportunity at, at the Totally Wicked it was something that I dreamt of and obviously it didn't go our way but I felt like we we made a good account, account of ourselves and uh, did really well well look, that like I say was sort of when you based onto the scene but I, I there was pressure on you but you 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 seem so relaxed and every time I've watched you play in those big games and obviously played alongside you as well, like you all, you never seem phased by anything. You always just seem so comfortable in, in the big moments. Is is that fair to say? Uh, yeah, I reckon so. I think once I get out there, I'm all right. I'm pretty nervous going into big games. I don't get particularly nervous through the season and thinking about them, but when we're in the sheds and, all the other boys are getting all hyped up. I try and just stay relaxed and I don't do too much in the, in, in the changing rooms in preparation wise. I just think about my job and what I've got to do. And when I get out there, the first five minutes, as you know, is always frantic. And then once again, the and the, the sort of hype and thingy settles down and you settle into the atmosphere and stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty relaxed. I think what, what will be, will be. It's almost just enjoy it. I think, like I said, I, it's all I've ever dreamt of was playing rugby league as a kid from Wigan. Um, so to be playing in grand finals, playing on the other side of the world against Penrith, playing against Sydney Roosters, to get them opportunities, I just I just wanted to enjoy them more than anything. Yeah. Just just for our listeners, what type of trainer are you? So I, I see you pick apart short sides with, with ease and against some of the world's best defenders. Is that 
you do a lot of work going into that. Is it a lot of video, a lot of repetition with your other outside backs? How, how does Jack Wellsby um, execute so well so much of the time? Um, I think I've become a better trainer. I think when I first first sort of came up, I was pretty lackadaisical, I wouldn't say. I was competitive. So if you, you put us in like short, small-sided games or or con drills and, and what bike sessions and stuff like that, I was always competitive, but... I think oh, like in the gym and stuff, I was never really a big advocate for stuff like that, but I have got better at that side and I just like playing rugby. I think that's that's what's yeah. got me here, to be honest. I just, if it, any time that I got to play rugby through school or anything, I'd always put my hand up, whether it's year above, two years above, stuff like that. I was playing since I was four. So um, yeah, I think it's just the more the enjoyment side in training. I think when we do do 13 v 13 and stuff, I'm ultra competitive and I like, I like to try things. I'm, I'm not scared of throwing a four, 40 meter pass in training and if you're doing it in training you're more likely to do it in a game yeah it it always fascinates me people with ability like you and to watch you like do those or, or you can almost see the cogs going over in your brain about like how something might work and how you might be able to pull something off and if they jam then this is what I'm going to try and I, I want to try it's like almost like a game of chess over on those short sides and it, it, it's fascinating to watch people like you sort of work on ideas in training and then obviously see them come to come to fruition on game day? Yeah, no, I think it's sometimes in a game when you're getting, especially at full back or six, sometimes if you end up at the back and you know someone's going to jam, the first first couple of times I'll, I'll think, right, come, I want you to jam me if you get me fair enough. And then I know I know they're going to come because if they get the first one right, the more than likely they're going to do it the second time. So it's to be fair, I've had, I've had a lot of help with Johnny Lomax as well and then Lachlan Coote and I got to watch Ben Barber do it. Well, got it done to me by Ben Barber in training when I was playing centres. So, um, yeah, I've had a lot of good people to look up to and, and sort of pick things. But uh, I think the, the biggest thing I always think is you just got to have a short memory as well because there's, there's times in a game and it won't get shown on the highlight reel <laughs> is that I've caught a ball, I've thrown it, it's gone over Tommy making Tommy's head and it's gone into touch. And then the next one I'll do the same and it'll hit him on the chest and he'll put it down. Do you know what I mean? So it's... It, it's one of them. It's like you can have a lot of good things and a lot of poor things, but if it's coming off, it's it looks nice. Is that something that you're you're conscious of? It's like uh, forget, move on, because there was a generation of players that, when they made mistakes, would go into their shell, and it would it would put them off, or they would be gun shy on taking that next opportunity. So is that is that something that you're consciously aware of, or is that just who you are as a person? Um. Yeah, probably who I am as a person. And I think I've got a lot of confidence in my team as well. I think if we're in good ball and I, I throw a poor pass and we lose the ball, I'm pretty confident they're not making 100 metres and scoring. Whereas if it was doing it in my own 10, then it's a bit different, isn't it? But if I'm doing it in good ball or in sort of that yellow zone in between, I'm pretty confident that Morgan Knowles, Matty Lees, them type of players are, are going to back me up and, and going to protect me. They'll come up to me if I throw something poorly and, and say, don't worry, we've got you, we'll, we'll cover you. And, and then you've got James Roby in there as well. It's He's always calm as well. So, yeah, I don't really think about what's gone wrong. I just think about what's next. It's it's an incredible group mindset that, like, all right, Jack, we're going to trust you to do your thing. We see you working on these ideas to train it. We accept it's not always going to come off, but we need to encourage you to try that pass. But And if it doesn't come off, you know what, we've got your back. But not all teams work like that. Is that something that you guys at, at St. Helens, uh, again, is that something that you you work on as a team or you talk about in training? Uh, we don't particularly talk about it. I think it's just sort of un underlying in, in the likes of Morgan Knowles, Matty Lees, James Roby. They just want to do their job well and they know I've got to do my job. If if they're defending set, set for set and staying in the grind, I've got to come up with a play or, or Johnny's got to come up with a play, Lewis Dodd's got to come up with a play, I think. That's the sort of way we've done it. And I think this season in particular, we probably come up a bit short as a halves group in some some scenarios. I think think back to the semi-final against Lee when we when we got beat, we we trounced them really with without the ball. Um, Morgan knows Mike Lees were going after him, keeping in them in the, their own 40 pretty much the whole game. And we couldn't ice our opportunities and they did. Mm. Talking of taking off short sides, you, you're only you're only 22. Um you've got still a lot of improvement left in you. Something I've uh, witnessed you do this year is 
you'll chase down on kicks now. So when you put those box kicks up into the corner, obviously you play a bit of fullback as well. So you know what it's like when you've got someone hassling you and literally as soon as they catch the ball, you're on top of them. Is that something that you've developed into your game? Uh, and also, what what else are you looking to add to your game, being only 22 and still plenty of improvement left? Yeah, obviously that, that kick chase sort of thing, um, especially when we've been defending really well, I think it's the least I can do for, for my middles. I think mm. a lot of the time I'm stood at the back watching, uh, pointing, shouting at him, telling him where to go. And I think if I can go and land on that first one, it sort of gives them that 10 metre rest. And then sometimes you see, especially Matty Lees, he comes flying through and makes that tackle five times out of 10. Um, so I'm thinking if, he, if he's managing to find the energy to do something like that, I've got to be able to do it. Um, so yeah, and then improvement wise, I think I think defensively I've come on at leaps and bounds this year, especially especially in our goal line. I think I've got no better mentor than Paul Wellens, my head coach, who is probably England's greatest ever fullback. Um, and he, he's, he's always on my back. All right, all right you can stop. Stop now. Like, we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't need to be sucking up to Ella on this podcast, all right? We I'll know suck up to Ella. It, it's been, I told him last night, I went for a beer with him last night, told him I was coming on with you. He was panicking. I know he's been on the phone to you. Make sure you talk me up. So just forget, give him Weller a wrap, no. all right? So forget him. Just be... be yeah, sob Weller. <laughs> no. no, it's all off my own back. Yeah. Uh, watching Lachlan Coop for the last couple of years helped as well. No, yeah, but defensively, I think that's... That's somewhere that I can improve and I'm improving, I think, especially at the back end of the year, just sort of finding a role. Um, all your great fullbacks do. Uh, James Tedesco, like you mentioned, I've seen, seen an analysis on him and stuff like that on, on on social media accounts and stuff. And that's something I, I want to improve at and give give the likes of my middles and players like that an helping hand. Yeah. Is fullback your, your best position, do you feel? Is that where you can have the most amount of impact on a game? Um. I always say fullback and six are pretty similar now, especially the way we play at St. Helens. I think Johnny Lomax is a very similar player to me in, in a lot of ways. He's got he's got a similar skill set to me as well. Um, I reckon the, the main difference is one catches high kicks and one, one makes loads of tackles on a big back rower. And <laughs> I'm not too fussed either way which one I do. I think six or, six or one, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable. Mm, well, speaking of impact on games, um, the 2020 Grand Final... You played in the centres that day because, you know, going back a little bit to to, to talk about why you're in the centres, you, you were so good and you got your opportunity through injury and misfortune, but then you were so good, you you demanded a place in that team. You're playing in the centres that day. What, what, are, what are your memories from that 2020 grand final at Hull Stadium, empty, no fans there, we're playing your hometown and one of the biggest rivalries in world sports, Saints v Wigan. Yeah, it was pretty whirlwind. I think obviously we had we had COVID before that and there was no one there. So just that whole process before um, we played the Roosters at the start of the year. And then I think we just, we were terrible for a good four or five weeks. I was pretty terrible. Wasn't confident in, in myself. And then COVID came probably the perfect time for us to think we're on a downward spiral. We weren't playing well at all. Um, and we all just broke off and went into our own groups. And the sun was shining. It was beautiful in England for once. Six six months around just doing nothing, training on your own. And then we come back in. Um, and it, it was just a weird time. But when we came back in, I think we were just so fit. Everyone had kept themselves in really good nick. We just blew everyone away. We were beating everyone by 40 points again. Everything was rosy. And then we we got beat by Wigan at our place. I think that was I the only time we lost. Mm. And it was, I played in the centres that day and it was an eye opener because we we were battering everyone and they just come and came over the top of us. So we, we sort of, at that point, I sort of knew we were going to be playing Wigan in the final and I was thinking about what I could do better. Um, and yeah, when, when we got to the game, well, we went up to Hull early and I, rem I was so nervous. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. It was a grand final against Wigan, mm -hmm. but there was going to be no one there. So I was thinking the atmosphere is not going to blow my mind. Um, there's not. I know what they're going to do. I know how they play. Um, and I room with Regan Grace in the hotel, and he was the most relaxed. He is the most relaxed mm -hmm. man ever. Just lying on the bed watching his watching his Netflix and stuff like that. Whilst I was pacing up and down, going to the toilet every five minutes, drinking <sighs> loads of water. And then we get the walk out. Eerie, wasn't it? It, it was, was. eerie. Mate, you know, you, you're jogging 
the memories there and that because we didn't stay over the night before because of COVID we just stopped in that we hotel for a little there, bit yeah. didn't we yeah yeah we just went up and little village hotel and all we always stay there but there was no one in the hotel either was there no usually when we go up to all those people like yeah, yeah. knocking about and that asking for a couple signatures and stuff and it was just like couldn't even go for a coffee i don't think starbucks no. was open or anything it was it was completely strange and like we got there and walked out nothing no noise a couple of fireworks but like mm. eerie we stood there we lined up you took the first carry i always remember because <laughs> the ball came down i can't remember who passed you the ball but it came out and like six people flying out of here and you just found your front and then we were into it weren't we mm. and it just went like that rapid next thing i know i'm Chasing Tommy's kick and putting it down. I couldn't tell you any other details than that. Oh, re really? Is that yeah? Is that it? So you remember the very beginning, yeah, and the very end. And then there's a pit, like at the very start of the game. We were again, we were we were on top, and we were just on their line all game. And then they went up the other end, and we held them up over the line. And I remember thinking, we're on here, we're on, we're mm. gonna win this. And it, the, the further it got in, the closer it was. I think I don't know. Yeah, it was hard as well because. I was, I'm not an out and out centre. I can play there. Yeah. And I was I was struggling to get involved in the games a lot of the time. They would kick to Riggs and then I'd take the second carry or Zeb would and and then I'd sort of just stand there and, and just have my head in defence. So it was a weird game. It was just a weird atmosphere, wasn't it? Yeah. Because we knew how big the game was, yeah. but it's all it didn't on the feel yeah. like it. Yeah. It like it was all on the line, obviously. And like I, I don't know if the crowd be, I, I don't know if it made it even more special, like the fact that there was no crowd there, that it was just us and that sense of eeriness. Yeah. Like you think back to those cheers and we're like, usually you're surrounded by your spectators and it was sad that we couldn't celebrate with them, but I think it, it adds to the legend a, a little bit. But before we get into that, that moment, things that, that didn't just happen. That didn't happen by accident. I can recall us doing it at St. Helens and it was a, a big, um, big thing that Christian and Wolf had is about training for chaos and doing those scenarios at the end of every Tuesday, I think it was. Yeah. He, 13 on 13, here's the situation, go. Y you remember those sessions, but can, can you ever remember anything like that, you know, coming off in training? No, no, not, not to that extent where the balls bounce perfectly and I've put it down. I think there's been a little bit one or two with, with Christian and we still do it now. Uh, them sort of scenario sets at the back end, like you need to defend your line for 12 plays or you need to find a point or a try and you get to the last play and you're just throwing it everywhere. And then some, someone thought, and you score a mad try, but nothing like that. And so, yeah, we, like you said, we did, we did practice stuff like that, but we didn't practice aiming for the sticks, letting it bounce <laughs> and land in my hands. But yeah, it was, it, We've got it up in St. Helens now, the, the pitch, it's just, we compete on every play. And I think that's that underlines it, done it pretty much perfectly. Well, even if if you if you go back and watch the video, when we were taking other penalties, not just in that game, but that year, people always chased. You know, they didn't, you know, it wasn't a foregone conclusion that um, Cootie had kicked the goal. Yeah, it was yeah. like, we're going to we're going to chase down just in case we're needed. Even though the likelihood of it hitting the post, it's it's at you know ninety nine times out of a hundred, or even probably greater probability, he kicks the goal or it goes wide. Yeah, doesn't hit the post. But St. Helens players, they chase. They made sure they were on side, and they chase. So these things don't happen by accident. But with the it was chaotic scenes. Obviously, they've they've had a penalty. Yeah. They missed. Oh we, yeah, I, forgot, I even forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, because Johnny caught the ball around yeah. 60 metres. Yeah. Well, yeah, he yeah. had the, the awareness as well to catch the ball yeah, and, yeah. and run it back and, and not be- They didn't oh, chase their kick. They didn't chase their kick, which allowed Johnny to advance his way up the field. And it's those little things that make a difference. They didn't chase it. Because I can remember, mate, when they got that penalty, Theo for Theo Farge for laying down, I thought we're done, it's over. Yeah. Zach's going to nail it. He mix it, misses it. But then, right, for you now in that situation, Tommy Makinson, he wasn't your side, was he? No, he was, was my winger. He he was the other side. So yeah. he so our our right wingers come in to take the shot. Yeah. Because Tio got caught with the ball, didn't he, as well? Yeah. Because Tio's our main 
he was our seven when he'd, he'd have probably demanded, this is my kick. And it was that chaotic. Tommy's just come in and gone, right, I'll do it. Because Tio got caught the play before. Yeah. But you've got you've got to have the presence of mind not to first stay on side, right? Which is quite a difficult thing to do in a field goal situation because they tend to stand a lot deeper. Yeah. It, were, were you actually looking at where Tommy was where Tommy was and even knowing that Tommy was going to take the shot. Yeah. Well, it was, it was a different, like I said, it was a different atmosphere. So I could, you could physically hear him screaming, I want the ball. So I knew to line up with him because there was no one else there. He was the only one shouting and there was a bit of mumbling, but there was no real noise. So you could properly hear him screaming. Um, so I just knew I had to be online with Tommy because he was getting the ball. Ah, oh, right. I didn't. Uh, yeah. F yeah, you could. You, yeah. you could You could hear everything. Usually in a grand finals situation, you won't be able to, if you're on the left centre and the right winger's calling for the ball, you won't be able to hear it. But he was screaming no. that loud on you to, to line up with Tommy. And he was, it was pretty obvious if he was watching the play that he was getting the ball. There was no blockers or anything. Yeah. He was just stood there waiting. Well, you know, what happens in the next sort of, what, not even... 10 seconds did did you know as well that Tommy ran off thinking yeah, he's got I've it I've seen like a clip from like behind the sticks of him and Al running off and then they sort of pause <laughs> and like put their head in their hands and then I put it down and they sort of like has he got it and then they start running when everyone else runs in so yeah it's, mate, it was carnage it, it, mate if I say this uh, about that moment if a Holly, group of Hollywood script writers were around and they, that's the story that what happened, they put it in a story, they throw it in the shredder. It's too, it's, it's yeah. too much of a fairy tale with all the, the subplots around COVID, no crowd, or uh, no, the field goal, it hits the post, it bounces, all oh, right, St. Allen's left center chases and scores. Like, no, the field, the field goal, well, uh, let's fuck that off. Let's just have the, Tommy Makinson's drop goal goes over. Yeah. That, that's enough. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. I'd have been happy with that. <laughs> well, everyone, <laughs> well, we just needed to win, didn't we? Yeah. We needed to win. I'm glad you got that moment off Tommy. Yeah. Because we would oh. never have heard the end of it. Like, <laughs> I know. That, ima imagine how much that boot would have been worth. Yeah. If he'd, I know. if he'd have hit that, that'd have been framed at Totally Wicked Stadium like signed, like this is the boot. Yeah, he'd have had a picture holding it and everything, yeah. no Tommy. He still claims it's his assist. It, well, it's the best try As assist ever of all time. Yeah, that's, if I didn't do that kick from 40 metres out and hit the post, you'd have never scored. So he still reminds me of that. And I let him have that. You know, he's happy with that. Yeah. Um, you know, that that moment will be replay replayed forever for as long as our sport exists grand finals in a hundred years I reckon will we'll, we'll show that moment about what's possible is that something that obviously when it happened you weren't aware of but is that something that like now you you sort of look at and like give yourself a little bit of a pat on the back or, or makes you does it invoke any sort of emotion oh it's nice to see and stuff like that I think um, it's just such a it's almost like a blur, isn't it? I think it's so weird because the whole year was just so strange and that topped it off. That was the weirdest bit of the lot, I think. I think it was maybe last week at some point it came up and Super League were three years ago today and then mm. next year yeah. it'll be four yeah, years yeah, ago, yeah. five years ago. It'll all Because it's sort of, the best thing about it is it's sort of in that, it's in the off season now because we played yeah. in November. Yeah. So there's nothing ever going on. So they are, they, they, oh, they've got something to post now. Yeah. So <laughs> everyone's going to yeah. see it every year now. Well, oh, I mate. think they would anyway, like, but that they've got a definite reason to to retweet it now. Mm. Well, mate, it, like, I, I was a Saints fan from a kid, and I don't know if you'd be old enough to remember, but I'm sure you would have seen it, the wide to west moment. Yeah, like, I, I'm I'm getting goosebumps thinking about wide to west, but I was there as a fan, and I I, I, I could never imagine anything being better than that. No, and 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 it was. It 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 told it for me. It's one of the the greatest moments in sport. Obviously, I'm biased because I was playing in the team, but yeah, it, it was it mad, was, wasn't it? Yeah, it's even difficult to put into words, really. Yeah, even when like I look back at it now, sometimes I just think like 
there's so many variables in it as well. The way the ball bounces, unbelievable, perfect. And like Bevan, like Bevan French is not thinking, oh, it's going to hit the post and drop down. You can see the panic in him when it when it hits the put, it's the bar, and then bounces completely over the bar, bounces to the left the way I'm running. I was think like I was in dreamland when it did, and I knew instantly that it scored instantly and hundred percent. And then I remember looking up at the screen. I knew I was onside. Everything, everyone else is panicked. Did you get it? Did you get it? <laughs> yeah, I got it. I got it. I know I did. did uh, it was just mad. W- w- were you aware of? where the sideline was, where all the in goal was as well. Because uh, that was my bit of a worry. I was like, hang on, is his, is his boot going to be like a lazy boot over the sideline? Just I felt like I'd, when I watch it now, I saw it like slide near and get closer and closer every time. Like, <laughs> but I felt like when I did it, I'd sort of like jumped and put it down. Yeah. But I hadn't. So when I seen that I was sliding on the rep- replay, I was thinking, oh, 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 and then I, got, I was fine after the first replay. I knew, I knew I got it. I was just trying to stay calm. I think another mad thing was like when, like that was my first grand final. So was that your first grand final? Oh, yeah, of course. So I didn't yeah. know like, well, we won it in 2019 as well. So I'd, I'd been on the pitch at the end of a game, but I hadn't played. And there's that many people on the pitch at the end of a grand final. When we won, there was just us lot and the Wigan players, and then like. Jenna Brooks weren't even allowed on the pitch. He was sort of at the side, like ushering people over. There wasn't really that many cameramen. Eamon came on, took the the non-players about 10 minutes to get down from the stands to be allowed on. I think that sort of like just being together, we was all, I got hugged about a thousand times in five minutes. It was just, it was just weird, wasn't it? But yeah, it was best memory I've got in, in the game so far. Well, the best memory that you've got in the game so far I'm just going to put it to your square. You, you'll never have another moment like that. No. It's 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 almost impossible to top. No, brilliant. It was, yeah, it is. We had a close one at Penrith this year, that, but for me personally. It, it, the, the, we're going to talk about that win against Penrith, but, which is obviously an amazing moment, but like, I mean, absolutely in, incredible. And then what a, what I think, obviously, I'm talking about that moment, and a lot of people would forgive you for and the club, and the, not just you, but and the club as well for like, oh, give themselves a pat on the back. We're going to dine out on this for years, but St. Allen's don't, and you don't. Did you feel like you were hungry for more success after that? Yeah, hundred percent. I enjoyed myself for a good couple of weeks, uh, and then. I sort of got back down to earth and started thinking, well, I'm still, I was 19, so I was still young and that's all I'd done in the game. I didn't want to be, oh, that that kid that came up, scored a try and then ended up playing championship rugby or league one rugby. I'd done nothing. No, the the only reason everyone knew who I was now was because I scored that try. So my, my main thing was I want to I want to play every game next year. I want to push people. I want to be pushing for... I want to give Saints hard choices. I want Wolfie to be thinking, ah, I don't know, I'm not going to fit him in the team and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to kick on and, and just just do the best I could. So we have that bus ride home, which was, we were all still in our kit. It was all pretty chaotic. And then we have the Mad Monday. We're all celebrating. Well, I don't know if we're, yeah, we technically we're at work recovering yeah. right yeah um not that the uk government would be bothered not because now. they no. they weren't playing by the rules and yeah. we probably weren't playing by the rules ever like you say you got hugged about a thousand times I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd i'd take covid and i'd pass it to all my bloody relatives as well i didn't give a shit i was all over you like a rash what about all the fines we got as well we got not for the grand final but like oh. in the year yeah how weird was like you couldn't high five, but you could knock. It was just it was bizarre. Was it like that in the NRL as well? I, I think I, you know what, mate. I can't remember. We, we, I can't remember what the protocols were to playing, but I, I I seem to recall it was like we'd get tested every day at trainings, yeah, similar. Yeah. But I, but oh, they weren't as hard on actions on the field, yeah, because we did get fined for. I remember like, high fiving James Bentley after he scored. And then Rushy's pulled me and said, you can't do that. You've got a knuckle touch him. I'm going, well, I've just been in the same tackle with him three sets in a run. Like what mm. difference? I got fine, like 200 quid for it. I think I didn't have to pay it. I wasn't <laughs> going to pay it either, but 
<laughs> it was like, okay, fine. Yeah. It was mad. It, it was. Um, it was a fucking bizarre period of our lives. Yeah. But good period, though. Good period. And then, like, the, the celebrations continued long into the night. Then we had the presentation on... The Wednesday night we went to the Griffin before. Yeah, that, that's that was good time as well. That the Griffin had sort yeah. of like opened back up, and we they gave us a big long table. Didn't we? They? We organised like thirty tables for one. Yeah, because <laughs> you you could go to the pub, but you could only go to the pub with your own household. Right. But we could go, and if you happen to be there, you happen to be there. So we organised. I think it was like twenty five tables for one with a substantial meal, and I can remember being like, oh. We've got to be, we've got to be careful here. Like, yeah, you know, like, be cause that, that was the first, the Wednesday after the grand final was the first day of things opening back up. Yeah. And like, you know, everyone was keen. There was loads of families in the Griffin. And I was like, oh, we need to keep a lid on things here. And then basically after like four pints, it's like we were in the away end. Anyone that yeah, came in was like, what the fuck is going on in there? And that's where we were celebrating. Then we went back to the club for our <laughs> presentation. Fucking... <laughs> What a time. No sponsors were allowed or anything. Yeah, were there. it was just we're... us and all, all like the staff and it was just carnage on it. It was brilliant. It was. It was. How how did it compare to to other grand finals that you've subsequent, sub, subsequently gone on uh, and won? Yeah, well, obviously, personally, the aftermath was, was mental for me. I went to, after the presentation night, I went straight to Tenerife and ripped in because their flights had opened back up. So me and all my mates from school and that flew over there. I was only 19. Uh, so we ripped in over there for a good few days. And that's after that, I sort of came back down to earth. Um, and then 20, 2019, I didn't really get too involved because I, I didn't play. I played out 10 games that year. 2021, the year after, was good three-peat sort of equaled Leeds record. So we, we carried on for a bit like then. I can't remember where we actually ended up on that Mad Monday. We don't think it was out ridiculous. And then when we won it for the fourth time, we we had a good a good time. We, the lads usually go to Dublin and stuff on, on the Monday and it's always the best in Dublin and it? it's brilliant. It's the best place on earth. <laughs> you know what? I've never been. Never? Never been to Dublin, no. Oh, it's... No, but when we just had our Mad Monday, it'd be the Griffin. Yeah. That was, that was it. And then... Lads were going playing for England, never had really time to organise a trip. It just yeah. wasn't a thing. But I, I remember that particular year in, when I came back in 2020, we were looking at doing something like Dublin, but obviously because of COVID, fucking yeah. COVID, it just didn't happen. Um, obviously that cements a place in St. Helens history. That wasn't enough. They kept getting, they kept wanting more and more um, four in a row. And then you get presented with the challenge of going over to play the Penrith Panthers, um, who actually on these two East cans, you know, they completed a three-peat this year, yeah. um, 21, 22, and 23. But at the start of this year, St. Helens went on Mission Impossible. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, that's a perfect way to put it. No one gave us a chance, did they? Um, well, the, the, the Aussie media were like, saying, no, oh, this could be a cricket score. Yeah. Like, to play Penrith at Penrith Park, like, even me, as, like, I felt connected to the squad, and I know what Saints history is like, and I'm a fan. Like, I'm at that stage in my life, I was a fan, and obviously a mate of a lot of the the players involved, and obviously good mate Paul Wellens, who was the, it's basically his first it's game as head there. coach. And I'm like, this is going to be... It was going to be hard, yeah. I, I remember first when it got first announced, all the lads were just buzzing when we was, was going on a good pre-season camp. I think going over to Australia doesn't get much better. We, we stayed in the Manly, Manly Pacific right on the beach and all the lads were, how good's this? Um, but we knew we knew the job that and and, and and I won't say we were apprehensive, but we were we were ready for it. We were, When we got over there, everyone, every time someone recognised us or asked why we were here as a big group, they was like, oh, we're playing Penrith in the World Cup Challenge and everyone was going, oh, you've got to beat them. You've got to beat them. We sort of felt like no one liked him, almost. And I think we get that back over here now. Like, well, we did for the last four years. I don't know that it'd be different now. We've we've not gone on and won it again. But everyone's like, oh, St. Ellen's, I hate St. Ellen's. So when we got over there, we we knew what was at stake. And we was just, I don't know, it's sort of similar to the 
the Roosters game that I thought no one gave us a chance over here. No one really gave us a chance over there. Uh, and we managed to do it. What was it like in the in the build up? Because you you played a, a warm up game against played the Dragons, Saint George, Saint George, yeah. and you won that one. But didn't you have like a an opposed session against someone? <laughs> yeah, we did not. We played North. We was training at Manly's ground. What's it called there now? Um, Brookvale. No, no. The, the, oh, the, the training facility. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. So we was training there. And we, to be fair, the first week we were, we were there, first week and a half, we were getting flogged, like still pre-season. Um, Matty Daniels was at red hot. <laughs> I was the whitest man in Manly. <laughs> and I was getting absolutely flogged. I was knackered at the end of it. Um, and we, we had an opposed session against North Sydney Bears. And we was like, ah, oh, well, we should batter these. So, whatever we turned up there they've turned up they've all got polos on and stuff and we're thinking what's going on here like <laughs> we turn up in like our vests like sun cream all over our faces and then they get stripped whilst we're doing wrestle inside with with wello and we're battering each other in their in their wrestling gym come out and we say right we're going to do a block of con into like kickoff sets for 12 minutes so it's like yeah right okay kick off their first carry full contact I'm sitting at the back point and going oh I was thinking that can't be he's like he was meant to be just like yeah, bodies in yeah. front type of their coaches at the back point and I was thinking Christ this is, we're on here and then I remember they kicked back to us we carried it in Percy's like caught the ball my, the most casual man in the world jogs it in they've chopped him in half I mean what's going on here and they just battered us up and down for about an hour and a half straight and we all got in the huddle at the end thinking these are at part-time Aussies like they've dusted us up we've got no chance and then well I was like don't they've come like it's a yeah. big game for them almost and we sort of took it on the chin and understood it and we were getting flogged as well mm. like we'd do 12 minutes and do a massive set of con with Matty Daniels and then go back into it and they're fresh so yeah but it was an eye there's, there's context around it about why you could maybe justify not winning that game, but yeah. it still happened. It must yeah. have left. Must At the time, it felt like we were terrible. Like, that's what we felt like. It was like, well, what's just gone on there? Um, but then when we did sit down and we watched watched it back and stuff, we was like, well, yeah, we can see mm. can see the other side of it. Oh, oh, did you lads get together that that sort of senior group? Or, well, you not a senior player, but one of the, 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 the key players, part of that spine. Um did you speak about the fact that nobody did give you a chance? Um, no, not directly. Not as in like we all sat down and, and well, maybe we, I, it's that, that's part of a blur as well because we were just enjoying myself most for the first two weeks. Then we went to Ownbush and there was nothing there. So we just chilled out then. <laughs> um, so so is that is that how you, you and the, the team approached it? It's like, right, first two weeks we're going to, enjoy being in Sydney, being in Manly, and then, right, we'll knuckle down back end of the, that, that last week yeah. in the build-up to play Penrith. Mainly the first week we got there, we sort of said, because we all came in, we didn't travel as just like one group. We came in like seven different flights of different players and different staff. So we all arrived at different times. So like we, we train like individually, but we couldn't do anything massively. So the first week we sort of said, right, we'll, we'll enjoy it. We'll have good fun. I'll have a couple of beers here and there. But the next morning we're, we're training hard. We're going to get it out of us. It's still pre-season. So the first two weeks slowed down the second week when we was playing St. George. Uh, and then once we beat St. George, we went straight off to Homebush then mm. and see a beer until we won. We had a couple that night. <laughs> yeah. What are your memories from that from that game um, against the Penrith Panthers? I think you and Jerome Luai had, had a bit of a, a battle when England had played Samoa in the World Cup, you played each other twice. Um, obviously, the, the first game, you put on a bit of a clinic. Uh, the second game, they got they got a bit of revenge. But what are your memories fr from that game and, and you going into that? You, and then, obviously, you pick up man of the match in, in a World Cup challenge at the age of, what, 21, 22? Yeah, I remember doing a bit of media here and there and a lot as it always does, it sort of weather was going to play a factor and it was telling us it was going to be 40 degrees at the foot of the mountains and it's going to be 
you're not going to be able to breathe and that. And then we turn up and it's absolutely tipping down and we're rubbing our hands together a little bit, thinking this is our type of game, this. Um, but yeah, we're, I don't know, probably a bit nervous, obviously, um, was one of the first thoughts. Um, backs against the wall type thing, sort of thinking no one's gives us a chance that like we've spoken about. Um, wanting to prove a point. Um, wanting to win it as well. Like, we didn't want to just go there and make a good account of ourselves. We believed in ourselves as much as they probably did. And we thought, well, I knew quite a lot of their players from playing against Samoa and knew some things that they're going to come and throw at us. And I knew they were big and strong, but I, I knew we were big and strong as well. So I was quietly confident going into the game. Um, and it, it showed when we got out there. Yeah. Well, I, I think... I'd, I'd said to a, a few of you lads after that game, I think in St. Helens, 150 year history, it's the greatest achievement. And I think that group that you're an integral part of is now the best St. Helens team that has ever existed. Um, you know, I think when I was part of that sort of 2006 squad, like that was spoken about in such a high regard. I think to like the 01, 02 teams, that beat Brisbane as well. And then there's teams that I, I didn't see, but I heard a lot about like the 66 team and stuff like that. But it, it, do you feel that this is St. Helens or that was St. Helens greatest ever team? And by winning that, you you cemented yourself in, in the club's history as the best ever? Um, yeah. I, to be fair, I was, I was pretty young in 2006. So I can't remember the style of rugby or anything like that. I just know the accolades of, of what they won. And there's going to be arguments for each each case, isn't there? But I think we're one of, if not the best, best St. Helens groups that we've had. And I think the way we've won everything over a four-year period, we, there's a throw a challenge cup in there, throw a league leader shield in there, four grand finals, a World Club challenge. I think it's hard to argue now, I think. I think that was a, a big motivating factor that, if we do this, that there's no arguing anymore. Yeah, for well, everything. I've, yeah, it's it. It's done. As far as I'm concerned, and look at the the 06 team was in the mix, and I was a part of that. But I think this group that that you're at the forefront of certainly is. We're going to take a quick break from this podcast to talk to you about AG1. Now, this is a product I've been taking for over a year now, and I absolutely love it. It gives me all of my daily nutritional needs in one easy drink. All you have to do is put in one scoop of AG1 into a nice cold glass of water and you are set for the rest of the day. The cupboard has been cleaned out of tablets and powders because all my needs are met by AG1. The power of routine cannot be underestimated and we all know how small habits lead to big wins. Some of those big wins for me have included better gut health. My clarity, especially in the afternoon, has improved so much gone as the mid-afternoon slump. AG1 is a foundational nutritional supplement. Now, as humans, we all share that same basic foundational needs. That's where AG1 take care of everything. This supports your body's needs like nutrient replenishment, gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. AG1 is the supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily. And that's why they've been a partner and I've been a user for so long. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. A buy round exclusive. If you try AG1, you get a free one year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com forward slash buy round. That's drinkag one dot com forward slash buy around for our exclusive Australia wide offer. Check it out. So at the age of 22, you've won four grand finals, World Cup challenge. What's next? Well, I've got to try and win, win again. I think that's the, the main thing. Um, I think obviously the year just gone. We, after the, the triumph in, in Penrith, I think we sort of let ourselves down and in a lot of ways, I think, um, there was a lot of talk about James Rolby finishing, Louis McCarthy, who were, who were two big parts of our team, two, you know, better than I do. Well, they're massive parts of our team and we didn't want to sort of 
send them out on a sour note and I think we did that um, so it's sort of about putting a th couple of things right this year and and moving forward with it I, I think t to be fair though let me just pull you up on that you were going to pay a price for going to Penrith and taking that that challenge like we're going to play in them this year but it's on home turf you you're go you went over there obviously the travel factor and then the emotional energy that it, what it takes away from you. You were you were always going to pay a price for that. Like I spoke to Wello yesterday, and he was like, "You know, you quickly crashed that back down to earth." Like, and then that target, like he's saying, of like people don't like Saint Helens and the Saints players, but they don't like them even more now yeah. because of the success that they've had over there. Yeah, and you know, he, he said like we got beat by Lee two weeks later, and you yeah. know, he, he's gone from having 150 WhatsApp in in Sydney Airport to like two yeah. after the league game. It's like a quick it was. reality check, isn't it? Yeah, well, we, we landed, I think. It took us near enough three weeks to get home, it felt like anyway. We weren't playing forever. Um, uh, and then we got back and got into training. And we went, right, Cass this week. And we were thinking, what? We're going to Cass? Like, for anyone that doesn't know, Cass, it's the worst place ever, isn't it? <laughs> the the it's stadium all, it's is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wakey, the, the like, jungle. You look, yeah, yeah. You, I look on the fixture, fixture sheet and think, oh, Christ, we've got cast that day. Mm. Or oh, when it's coming up, you know it's looming. It's always tough when you go there. You never yeah. get an easy game. Their fans um, say some interesting things to you <laughs> as well. And you can hear them because they're you that can, close. Yeah, yeah. One I, of the only stadiums you can mm, really, isn't Yeah, it? I um, I often used to stand at the back getting ready to take the kickoffs and some of the abuse. I'd yeah. be like, you know, I didn't know you knew my mum that well. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fair enough. But... Um, very quick reality check. Yeah, and then, like you said, we we managed to take that game off, actually. We, we we weren't good, but we won. And then we sort of, I reckon that probably papered over what was to come. And we sort of relaxed a bit, said, oh, we're back into the swing of things. And then we didn't win for three weeks, maybe. Like I said, we went to Lee, we were newly promoted, and they, they had a really good season this year. So looking back on it, it's probably not as bad as a defeat as it, it felt yeah. at the time. It felt like... Yeah, newly promoted, awful. like... But they yeah. are actually they were a lot better than what they were meant what, to be. Yeah, yeah. What everyone yeah. was saying they were going to be that there was almost everyone wasn't giving them a chance, and then they've gone and won a Challenge Cup this year. So uh, the defeat wasn't as bad as it felt, but we sort of just couldn't get going. Like I said, it got that, that jet lagged sort of feeling for a couple couple weeks, and then we sort of started playing a bit better. Um, and I felt like, especially at the back end of the year, we. We didn't really have an excuse. We were playing well and we just got beat by a better Catalan side and legend in Sam Tompkins. Mm. I, I think there was a little bit of Saints beating themselves there in yeah. that last 10 minutes. Yeah. We I was, had it. I we was had a frustrated it. fan yeah. watching that back in Sydney. But in terms of you, Jack, and, and your ambitions now, I'm conscious of the fact that you're under contract at St. Helens for two more years, but is the NRL on, on the radar? Um, like I say, I'm, I'm contracted at Saints for two years. So my main, my main focus at the minute is keeping myself fit, keeping myself right. And I'm back in at the end of December to start training for the, for the new year. But I'd be lying if saying NRL is not something that interests you. I'm, I'm testing yourself against the best. I think the reason I, I feel that way now is, is, um, playing for England, I think when you play against Samoa, play against Tonga, I've not had the opportunity to play against New Zealand and England, uh, New Zealand and Australia, but them opportunities, they, they do excite you. Um, obviously I'm hoping that I'll get some more opportunities to pull on an England shirt and do it in that way, but I'd be lying to say that NRL's not something that's on the thingy, but like I said, I'm still contracted to St. Helens and if I, it's an hour, it's, it'd be an hard place to leave because I love it there so much. and. I'm not saying that's something that I'm I'm looking at doing, but uh, yeah, yeah, it, it is an interest in it. You yeah. know yourself well, how yeah. how luring it is almost sometimes. It's a decision that I'll come to if it ever pops up. So, w would you be the type of player that would want to go? You, you're either going to stay at Saints for the rest of your life, or you're going to look to go at the end of your next deal. Well, that's something I've got to figure out. I, to be, I'll be honest with you, I'm not particularly thought about it too yeah. much I thought I've just thought about you're not winning yeah I just take each each day as it comes and 
a lot of the time, like money gets thrown up and stuff like that. And I, I know it's too shit, but I, I genuinely would be playing rugby league for free if I wasn't playing at St. Helens. Mm. I'd be down at Oral St. James's or, or Blackbrook with, with my mates playing rugby. Um, it's one, it's one of them things. Yeah. And we always say it England, them, yeah. sometimes you get, you get to England and they'll give you the pay and you, some players will oh, it's a bit, it's a bit naff or it's not as good as what everyone was hoping. And now everyone goes, well, you'd be here for free, wouldn't you? If you had the opportunity when you were eight to play for England. So it's a bit touche, but I just want to be happy. I want my family to be happy. I want my mum and dad, my girlfriend, just to be happy and enjoy, enjoy me playing rugby. They get, they got a lot of coming watching me play at St. Helens. It's Friday night out going, meeting friends, seeing, seeing people they like. And it's, there's a lot more than just money and, and myself that go into it. And to be fair, like, I like, give a lot of credit to St. Helens because of the environment that they've created and the club that they've built. It's a hard place to leave. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I've got all my best mates are there. We're all, we are we're all genuinely best yeah. mates. And sometimes that's that's cliche as well, that clubs are best mates, but we've not we, we've not got no dickheads, not one mm. dickhead. Most clubs will have someone that's- L Louis, well, Louis he's not, out, there Louis not there anymore, is he? So. Exactly, so we're yeah. fine. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it's hard. All, everyone gets along really well. Like we've got a good. Can't wait to see everyone tomorrow at the party when we go to Robes's. So his retirement day should be good fun and stuff like that. We just have. Yeah, my missus loves going watching the games just to speak to everyone. So yeah, but well, it becomes. You, you become part of the family there, don't you? Yeah. Like that was, that was hard when when when, that, when I was faced with the decision about whether to actually go over to the NRL. Yeah, I had this. I had this ambition for, from like a, you know, 14, 15 year old to want to go. But then the reality of it is it's like, I'm leaving this great club and I'm leaving my best mates behind here. Yeah. Like it wasn't, wasn't easy. And players that have come through with like you, like you've come through with a crop of people there. And, you know, this law of the NRL and the, you know, the bright lights over there and all the hype and all the expectation and pressure. Because no doubt, I know you'd go over there and you'd kill it. Mm. If you go to the right club, you, you'd, you'd kill it over there, but it's it's not as simple as that. Yeah. I think that is one of the, the biggest biggest factors in it. You want to go and prove yourself a lot of the time. I think everyone in Super League, if, whoever goes over there, like I know Kai Pierce Paul's gone over there this year, Morgan Smithies, and I know they'll go well over there because they're good players. Uh, but ever since they've signed that, oh, he won't do it, he won't do it, he won't be any good. Do you know, I sort of think, oh, we'll see, sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? I think that's one of the biggest, biggest lures more than more than anything else. But I said, I'm still contracted at Saints for two years and I'm still happy there at the minute. And, 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 man, and look, I want to be very respectful of this because like I, I care about that club and I care about the people there and I care about, um, you know, the position of, of you and, and, and some people who are genuinely genuinely friends away from the game but are you aware that you know probably about halfway through this year you're gonna have an offer come from St. Helens and you're gonna you, you are gonna have to probably make a decision it, you're not you're not gonna wait until a, Saints aren't gonna wait for a, you have a year left on your contract and you can go to the market they're probably they're probably going to be tabling a substantial offer to play to put in a really long-term deal mm. for you at sort of like June, July time. Yeah. Oh, well, well, when it comes round, it comes round and I'll, I'll face it then. And I said, I'm just, I, I mentioned it then. I just love playing rugby and I love playing at St. Helens at the minute. I think I couldn't, I've never envisaged, envisaged myself anywhere else. And the less I think about it, the easier it is. <laughs> I, 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 know, I know what you're saying, but because you don't want it to become a distraction, yeah, yeah, and you don't want it to, you don't want it to be the narrative around for for the next sort of well two years. Like where you know you've been you've been spoken about. Oh, I don't know if you're aware of it, but you've been spoken about over there for a long time now. There's yourself, Lewis Dodd, another St. Helens player, plenty of other you know up and coming you know Smith at Wigan. Like they're dying for heart, they they're crying out for quality halfbacks. So you, you your name comes up, people that play in the spine, your name comes up. It's hard. It's 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 hard to ignore. And I guess 
you, you don't want it to be a distraction for two years. So it, it's a part of you even perhaps thinking like, no, let's go and get a deal done with Saints now. And you know, you, you've played over a hundred games at St. Helens already at the age of 22. Like part of that law to stay could be James Roby, who we're all like, we're going to be celebrating tomorrow night. That you could go past him, potentially. Yeah. Like yeah at the I age pushed. of 22, if you pushed it, if you do the maths and do some sums. Yeah. Yeah. I think one thing I, I do get conscious of is like, when it does, when you'll get a, a post on Twitter about something about Jack Wells being RL or, or thing, I don't want, I want, not only do I not want it to be a distraction for myself, I don't want it to be a distraction for my teammates. Yeah. I know what, when I see something come out about someone else, I think, oh, well, is he all in? Is he is he going to go to the edge of the cliff with me and jump off when we need to? I want to, I want him, I don't want my teammates to be questioning me because the way I see it for the next two years, it's say, Alan's, I'm all in. I'm, I'll no put my body on the what. line. No yeah. matter what's going on behind the scenes, whatever's going on, personally for me, my career and stuff, I, I'm going to go to the, I'm going to go to the barracks I'm going to go in, I'm, I'm ready for war sort of thing. And I don't want it to be a distraction for everyone else and thinking about, oh, well, my fullback is when we're in here walking, going through captain's run or in the sheds in the game, where's his mind at? My mind's solely on winning another grand final, a Challenge Cup and a, a League Leader Shield. Yeah, it's, a, it's an important attitude to have and I, I back you all the way with that because I, I'm blown away by how mature you are for, for 22. There's no way I'm sat across there speaking to someone like me at, at, at the age of 22. I'd be shitting myself wondering what I've said wrong or anything like that. Aside from St. Helens, you've got England. Um, fantastic 3-0 victory over Tonga. England haven't beaten Australia since 2006. There's not an active player now that was part of that squad. They've all, all that squad has retired. Roby was the last one. What can you and that England team go on and achieve? You've got a World Cup. Uh, sorry, you've got an Ashes series in Australia, 25, and then a World Cup in 26. What can you get? What, what realistically can you do? What's the aim? Yeah, no, it's, it's a really exciting time, I think. Um, for, for us, I think with Wayne and what he's building as as an England coach is pretty special. I think I think we've got every every chance of going on and doing something really special. And I don't say that lightheartedly either. I genuinely believe it. Obviously, <laughs> more times I tell you, you can't just go in and go, oh yeah, we've got no chance. But mm. I genuinely, genuinely, with all my heart, believe that we we can test test the best of the best. I think um, when when you go into England camp, you know it's the best time of your life, and I love going into it camp. Is. You have you make so many good mates and that then this three weeks we've just had has been brilliant. I think the World Cup slightly top six other than the result, but I just enjoy it so much. And I think when you when you sort of get that group together and we've had a blooded a few younger lads in the last couple of years, me, Mikey Lewis has come up and killed it. Pushing Wasn't for good. spots. Brilliant. Brilliant. I knew he would be to be fair. Um Harry Smith, outstanding, you know, for Golden Boot and stuff like that. I think when you're seeing players like that come in and seeing them enjoy it. Like it's not, it's something's building there, and yeah, it's it's exciting. I can't wait, can't wait to rip in. I, I'm gutted the way the World Cup ended. It took me a long time to get over that because um, I was I, not so much about. I wasn't thinking about winning it. I was thinking about more having a crack at the Aussies. That that, that means we're winning it. I, I wasn't thinking about winning the World Cup. I was thinking about beating Australia more than anything. And then Samoa did a job us, job on us and broke our hearts and. Yeah, the way it went was was awful, but I think probably built built a bit of character in me when when it comes to playing on an England shirt, and obviously enjoying it so much has also helped that. Yeah, well, you, you're learning those lessons at, at at a very young age, and I'm, I'm loving what I'm seeing from from the England team. And like you say, though, the the absolute time of your life. I'm I'm sat. Um, at home, just waking up, and then I get the FaceTime from Chris Hill, <laughs> and I'm like, "Do I answer or not?" And I can pick up, and you guys are all there partying. I'm like, "Ah, oh, it makes me sad. It makes me miss it." Yeah, it genuinely, genuinely makes me miss it. And I watched those tests, and I was like, "Far, oh. like I could never go back and play anymore." But those camps are, are 
are pretty special. And I know it's very cliche, but you you yeah. just got to keep enjoying it. It's because I've been part of those England camps when they've been shit, yeah. like really shit. And n the, not none of those players exist anymore. They don't they don't play. They're not active. We know we fucked up and we got it wrong. But now, like through Steve Mack, Wayne Bennett, Sean Wayne, and a lot of other people behind the scenes, they've created. A, it's like I want to play for England. Where yeah. There was a time, unfortunately, where some people didn't because yeah. it wasn't a fun place. But far, yeah. there's a good group of men there. Yeah, well, I think Wayne Wayne is one of them coaches that you want to go and play for. I love playing for Wayne. I think he's so patriotic and he, he matches a lot of my beliefs in playing for England and stuff like that. So when I get into camp and I know I've, every single person in that room, whether they're playing or not, are all in team first sort of thing. I think that's pretty pretty special and then when you do win 3-0 and you get to carry on a bit I, mean, I said to Mikey Lewis I said no matter how tired I think you, you stick it out because it's it's good fun and there'll be high points yeah stop, stop yourself in there's some <laughs> some loose human beings on that England team that <laughs> brings out the best in people that, yeah. like after that England after, after a series win you got people like Chris Hill John Bateman just yeah, Elliot White they, they, yeah. they don't have an off switch yeah, sm smelly done as well. So that was yeah. another big reason for, for us to whip in at the end of it, getting 3-0 and what a player he's been. I think it'd be disrespectful not to mention him on here. Mm. Your good mate as well as mine. He's England's best back row, in my opinion, ever, ever. And yeah, yeah well, probably we finished the way we did for him. Yeah, it was, uh, it, it was, I was made up for him seeing him like that. Jack, we spoke a lot about um, rugby league. What what are the interests do you have? Football. You big are you Latix fan? Wigan fan. Yeah. Tough carry a couple of times mm. in recent times. You're going through a bit of our uh, our medicine at Everton, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. We're, it's it's not ideal at the moment, mate. I, I I'm not as invested in it as what I used to be. Yeah. But um I know that you know there's Go some for tough, a tough time. ride. Yeah. Yeah. Well we've been there. We've had points deducted two out of the last three seasons at Wigan and administration and then not play, play, playing pay, paying players so stuff like that it's um, yeah it's a tough watch and I'm not to be honest I've not been once this year because we started on minus eight and we were dead last and I thought do you know what I am not wasting my money to watch us because we're, we're too good for that league we're in but we're only going to finish mid-table I get I get I, can I, can I like it the, uh, I don't know if you'd remember him Chris Dean I, I went to watch oh, yeah, um yeah. Latix v Everton and I I forget that like we were in the Wigan end and I'm like jumping up yeah I fucking oh, forgot yeah. like they're not happy they're yeah, not yeah. no don't it's sit weird, and it? I'm like oh shit no I've got to sit down here yeah it's fucking it can go off like, yeah it, definitely I think that's that's another mega thing about England and even the rugby when you play here for England and stuff like the atmospheres and grounds it's better it's obviously better at football mm. like, and I'm, I'm not scared to say that either like when I go watching Wigan play away and stuff and we score it's unbelievable it's the best, it's the best. <laughs> uh, but yeah so uh, I'm into football I don't mind a bit of fishing I've hardly done any of that um, try, but I'm not I'm not, I'm not mad on anything all lads play golf couldn't think about worse <laughs> I like keeping myself to myself chilling out mm. that's it fair enough Fair enough. Well, we've got, we're almost at the end of it, mate, but we've got um, a section of the show that, that we do each and every week for each guest. Uh, this first part is the dream spine. All thanks to Tui's. How do you feel? I feel like a Tui's or two. Um, Tui's are all about teamwork, Jack. And no team works better without a spine. Or all great teams need a great spine, rather. So, uh, one, six, seven, nine. There's no rules or regulations around this, but interested to hear who you're going to pick. Right. Uh, I'm going to go sort of players that I've played with. I think that gives me more of a indication because then I know they're good people as well. And Ah, I like I sort it. Of, yeah, fair enough. Because I could go with someone that I think's mega at rugby, but might not, be, you know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'll go uh, Sam Tompkins, played with him at England. Very good player. Speaks for himself pretty much, mm. doesn't he? A really good bloke and even better player. Six, I'll go... George Williams, my captain at England now, my two former captains. Um, yeah, he's outstanding. He's I love playing with George. He's very similar to me in rugby, rugby senses as well as sort of, we see the game very similar. We just enjoy it. We don't think about it too much and we work hard. 
So, do you want to know an interesting fact about George Williams? Go. He's the only man in human history that can have a cigarette in the rain and it doesn't get wet. <laughs> oh, he'll be he'll be cut deep with that one, I think. Conk. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a, he's a good lad, though, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's, good he's a good lad. Seven. I was. I've I've got nailed on answer, but I I think. Lewis Dodd's going to be outstanding. I've come up with him and he's an out and out seven. But yeah. I'm going to go with Johnny Lomax at seven, obviously. Ah. I had to give Doddy a shout out because yeah. I know how good he's going to be, but I think it, I'd be rude to leave Johnny yeah. off. I think he could play one, six and seven. Mm. Uh, and I don't know which one he's best at. So that's a compliment to him, isn't it? it and is. then nine, take a stab in dark. Yeah. James Roby. Yeah, absolutely. Best player I've ever seen, best player I've ever played with, and one of the best blokes I've ever played with as well. I um, I tend to agree. And obviously we get to celebrate him tomorrow night. I think he's uh, England's greatest ever product. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to argue now, isn't it? Like, yeah, 100%. He's outstanding. And Sorry, the, the greatest player England's ever produced. Yeah. yeah. Bar, bar none. Yeah, he's uh, like, easily, I think, anyway. Um, and I've obviously played quite a lot of games with him and he sort of, I sort of hung on to his coattails when I was coming up and going for coffees with him and uh, him and Louie and, and Kyle sort of took me under the wing and I'm growing really close to him and uh, yeah, I love him as a person as well as a player. That's it. That's it. He's hard not to love him. He is. Everyone he, loves him. Yeah, everyone loves him. Yeah. Everyone loves him. Um, well, thanks for that, Jack. Uh, the dream spine. So we've got Sam Tompkins, George Williams, Johnny Lomax, and James Roby. Yeah. It's a great spine. All thanks to Tui's. How do you feel? I feel like a Tui's or two. Hey, just by the way, you mentioned there uh, about George Williams being your captain. You stepped in in his absence. How how was that for you? Oh, yeah, amazing. Um, something I didn't expect, obviously, um, going in. I knew George was banned. Well, I knew he was banned for one game and then we appealed and got two games. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Cheers. Yeah, you're Cheers welcome, George. Did, don't, didn't the RFL ban him for an yeah. extra game? Yeah, he got and banned against at us, appealed it, and then went, you're getting banned for two because it's a frivolous ch- frivolous appeal or something. And I was thinking. So he got banned one game, they appealed it and banned him again because it was no case to answer. So I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but yeah, so he got banned for two games. Why would the RFL... Uh, yeah, ban their own captain for the two opening tests against Tonga. Yeah, I, I know. I sort of thought, well, I can understand banish. You got you got to follow follow the rules and stuff. But whether it's frivolous or not, you just said just leave it for one. But anyway, yes, it gave me the opportunity to be captain, mm. which is good. So instead of two, instead of one, I got two. Um, and yeah, Wayne, he just sort of said, dead straightforward as he is. Yeah, you're captain. Um, just play your game, enjoy it. And yeah. I didn't feel so much as, as a captain and I sort of did and I didn't because I had people like John Bateman, Elliot Whitehead, Victor Adley, Tom Burgess, Morgan Knowles, Mike Lees, who I all I look up to as players for the positions they play and how, how tough they play and the sort of captain sense they have sort of. Mm. But I tried tried my best. I think I did all right. A couple of speeches here and there. I saw, I saw you, like getting the boys together and... Yeah. Not laying down the law, but just being direct with them. Yeah. It's a tough thing to do at 22, like you say, to to speak to people like like Tom Baird, just like Johnny Bateman, Elliot Whitehead. Like. Yeah. But I also was ultra confident in doing that mm. because I knew if I missed something or they didn't agree with something, they'd sort of like be on the back of it. Yeah. But it was nice when I did do it and none of them jumped in. And I felt like, yeah, I must have nailed that one. <laughs> a couple of swear words, a couple too many swear words oh. and a bit of emotion, but... Uh, yeah, no, it was it was brilliant, and then standing at the front of the line, leading the national anthem, it's you know how good it is. It's brilliant. It is it? to to walk out to to be faced out, yeah, with the England badge on. Yeah, it doesn't get any better looking up. It's and pretty pretty special. Seeing the anthem, look up, yeah, perfect. And then that first test was tough, and, and we got over the line, and then it's sort of second game, horrible conditions, but still a oh, special. That was. It, Huddersfield on a football pitch, it's like, you, you won't have it in Australia, but it's like rock hard football pitch and now the water just sits on top of it. Mm. So the skill level was, 
below par. But that you you got to find a way to win. Yeah, and we did. And um, we played. We were perfect in all three games, more or less. I think the first game was the toughest, and then so, sort of everyone sort of settled and thought, oh. I find that you get that a lot when you play against like teams like like Tonga, and when you go to Penrith, you sort of naturally because of how big the, the sport is over in Australia, we put all them on a pedestal and like mm. the, the better than us almost type of thing. And that's a mentality that all Super League fans sort of have, I think, is that, oh, they've got no chance. Saints got no chance. England have got no chance. Tonga will batter him. Samoa will batter him. Australia, New Zealand. And then when you play them, they're just humans. <laughs> they've got two arms, two legs and a brain and a heart. And you've got to just rip in and just play rugby like you've done all your life. That's the way I go into them games as well. Yeah, okay, old Jack. I think back to like, you know, when I very first started out and I think we suffered a little bit. You know, the, the camp wasn't great. We, we weren't, there was no connection. But we did, we put them on a pedestal that yeah. we just felt like... We've not got a chance here. No. I remember that Tommy Makins had said that to me the first time he played Samoa in the World Cup and I was nervous. And I'd, I was putting them all on a pedestal. Mm. And I was thinking, oh, these are massive. These are going to run all over me. I'm playing six. I've been full back all year. Now I'm six. Yeah. I'm going to have to tackle whoever's at back row, thinking Jerome Luai, like you said. And then he said, oh, man, the only same as you. You've got the same legs. He might be a bit bigger, but he's got legs. He's got arms. He's got an art. You're going to have to tackle him. And I thought, well, yeah, that, that's, that's true. Yeah. And he went out and battered him. <laughs> You did. And then we got battered. Well, not battered, but it was turned a over. Heartbreaking that with Crichton getting that field goal. Yeah. Yeah. Still, still don't like thinking about it. It was horrible because we sh like, felt like we, the way we played all tournament, we deserved the crack at, at the Aussies in the world and the final at Old Trafford. Oh, mate. Don't. I, I was devastated I for you. Yeah. Awful. But you'll get that chance again. It's just sad that obviously that group. Well, you know, and you'll you'll turn over players and you'll be part of that. But it's important that you keep going what, what's being built there. Yeah. Be, yeah. Because you will get a chance, but you won't have Whitehead there. Like, you know, you 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 next World Cup, you'll think about those lads that you wish they were there, but they're not. Yeah. It's a new group now. Um but I, I'm I'm excited for you and with that att that attitude and that mindset is vital. It's not oh Nathan Cleary. Yeah. Like, you can't. Amazing player, yeah. like will probably be a future immortal in Australia. But yeah, you know, and we're not have like we. It's not like denying that we all know mm. they're good players. Yeah, but yeah. If if you go into the game saying he's better than me, he's gonna be better than you. Yeah, you've got to think. I'm the main dog. Here. I'm gonna be the best player, mm. and everyone's got to have that attitude. At least yeah. miles off, I reckon. I can remember. I'm not gonna name who it was, playing against Australia and. Um, one of the lads going over and like getting someone to like sat one of the, I think it was Greg Inglis. Oh, can you sign my boot? I'm like you fucking joking me? What are you doing? <laughs> no, that's not for like. Me. No, I don't mind a, a shirt shirt swap. swap. Yeah, but you don't need to be getting fucking yeah your boot a pair of boots signed. Must have been for a testimonial. Well, yeah, that's probably what, like. <laughs> but it's just yeah. At the end of the game, it's like it's a bit yeah. Like you're just showing it, that again. It reinforced that message of pedestal yeah. because you weren't asking any of the England lads for a pair of signed boots. No. Yeah. Exactly. And that. it's subconscious message. Oh, fucking hell! He's yeah. over there, fucking. And he must have thought about that before the game. A hundred percent. Like he's yeah. To go and get him done. That's what would have pissed me off more yeah. than him actually doing it. If he'd have seen him upstairs and gone, oh, do you know what I might get? Yeah. I might be able to go. All right. Okay. Oh, he's had a beer with him. Mm. But when he's subconsciously thought at the end of the game I'm going to take my boot off and I'm mm. going to get him to sign it odd yeah um, yeah we've got three questions left which we do for each and every guest uh, if rugby didn't exist or footy as I call it now being in Oz uh, what do you think you'd be doing um, I'd like to say I'd be playing for Wigan Athletic but I doubt it with my two left feet uh, I'd probably just be on be on site grafting if I'm honest, yeah, I won't be in any. I'm not. I'm not stupid. I'm, I could do school, but I hated it. I'd have just gone out of school, gone doing an apprenticeship, and found found a, found a trade and played Saturday Saturday league football and Sunday league rugby. <laughs> How good! I love that, Jack. That just it says a, a, a lot. Yeah, it really does. Um, a sliding doors moment that you you think about if the alternative would have happened. 
probably the 2020 grand final. If that kick goes over of Ardy because um, I don't get that opportunity to score, would we, we'd have never done the four in a row. We'd have never, I might not have kicked on how I might have kicked on. Uh, stuff like that. Just so, yeah, probably that 2020 grand final. Well, thank. Yeah. Lucky stars. Thank you. I don't know. I don't know what to think, but well, thank you. Like I always say, thank you for chasing that because <laughs> it was the most, the most important day of my life. Nice. And I, I'll forever be grateful for you for doing that um, and that club for bringing me back. It was just. Perfect, wasn't it? Yeah. It was. And you're you, so lucky that, I'm not saying like, but a lot of people don't get that fairy tale ending and you did. You got it perfect. Right. I, get, I think of like lockers that played in that game, Sam Tompkins grand final nice. this year. And like, like when I spoke about James Roby retiring mm. this year, is like, obviously you didn't want all the attention on him, mm. but subconsciously it was. And we wanted to give him the, the fairy tale ending. And a lot of the time for the year, we were sort of talking and going, yeah, but well, we'll just be us. We'll do this. This is us. This is us. And like, Wello sort of lost his cool with it and went, well, can we f that off? Like, this will happen. Fairy tales are all good in hindsight, but you've got to make it happen. And a lot of people don't get that fairy tale mm. ending. Oh, mate, for, well, for me as well, like, you, you you might have been be a bit young to remember, but you know, the hard the heartbreak of losing five in a row. Oh, yeah. And then I lost a couple over there as well for yeah. the dogs. It was like this is know. a shit shit occasion, this grand final. I hate it. That's fucking Yeah. You got and the then, at the end. So yeah, that I made mean, that sliding doors moment. It's something I think about that. Like, what happens if I'd have lost? Or what happens if we'd have lost? I know. Like if that kick goes over, where like where where would my head be at for the next month after yeah. that? Like, I, I struggled retiring anyway. Yeah. But if I'd have gone out on that note, fucking God knows where I'd be. Um, most interesting person that you've met? Um, uh, I've met him, but like, I've not had like a proper conversation. I'd probably go Ant Middleton from the SAS, who Aye. does wins. We met him, he came in and did a sort of uh, shirt presentation for us for the Samoa game. And like, I didn't sit down and talk to him for a long time, but he, his, his speech was about uh, being at war and and some of the things he had to go through. Uh, and I thought like the different side of world and different side of life that he's seen sort of puts into perspective like how lucky I am to be playing rugby league and not fighting for me well I was fighting for my country in hindsight but yeah. not, in, not in, in the same vein yeah, sort the, of thing the stakes aren't yeah. aren't as high yeah exactly yeah. so he was his speech I was ready to play there and then I think all lads were mm. it was pretty cool it, 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 it's been a, a noticeable trait that of the English rugby league team the the connection to the forces yeah yeah and Wayne is big on that as well we mm. do a lot of things with that yeah we've been to um, Burton and been in Laid Reefs and listen to stories and then Ant Middleton and stuff like that coming in. Yeah, it's it's massive, I think. Yeah, it is. It it sort of makes you appreciate what You've what we get to do. Like you play a made up game with made up rules. You know, when they talk about, oh, this is gonna be a battle in the middle, or oh, we're at war, we're in the trenches. We use the same analogies as what they do or they have in war, but at the end of the day it's just a like I say, a made up game, made up rules. We all go well, most of the time most people go home with yeah, a couple better. of sore shoulders, wake yeah. up a bit stiff. You know, you get your massage, your recovery. Those those people that went before us, that were in, you know, that fought for our what we have now in World War One and World War Two, especially like they weren't doing any breath work at the end of it, and yeah. having yoga sessions and massages and physio times, and or getting strapped up to go out. And yeah, they you just got on with it, didn't they? They sure did. Well, Jack, that just about wraps us up, mate. Thank you so much for coming up on the buy around because mate basically you've been you've given me the ability to put everything as a tax write-off so i was coming here to celebrate james roby's <laughs> uh, career i thought i know i'll do some work i'll throw in a podcast jack wellsby comes on i can write everything off to the oh, tax office and beautiful. just say i'm here for work and i happen to be going to james roby's party so jack you've saved me uh 
40% of my trip. So thank Perfect. you so much, mate. I really appreciate that. You, I'll invite you. you yeah. <laughs> you're, the, you're the gift that keeps on giving, lad. You <laughs> set me off on the in the 2020 grand final. And as I say, always thank you, but thanks for um, cutting the cost for me and... Uh, oh, belting, thanks may, for having me. Maybe I'll buy. Uh, well, I always, I always offer a beer for you, so maybe yeah. we'll go for a beer. Surely late. it's free bar tomorrow. Must be on robes. You'd, you'd hope so. <laughs> yeah, you'd good. hope so. But Jack, no, thank you for for coming here and um, sharing your story. I'm excited for you, for this future that you've got and that you've carved out, and you've created. Uh, I'm excited to see you keep progressing and improving as well. It's, I, I, I always uh, admire people like you that you can actually notice when you're trying to do something new, either with the ball or without, and that's something that's really stood out to me in your games this year about that that chase down on, on play five. So at 22, mate, you got the world at your feet. Look forward to seeing how this all progresses and thank you for coming on to the bye round. No, cheers, mate. Really enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Cheers, Jack. Cheers, pal.